Hi. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the basic functional unit of the kidney, the nephron. Points of focus will be on the six major structures listed here of the nephron and what each structure does. Specifically, what is going to be getting filtered from the blood, what is going to be getting reabsorbed into the blood, and where, and what is happening to the fluid as it flows through the nephron, specifically what is happening to the volume and the osmolarity or the solute concentration. Now I have drawn here a single nephron connecting to a single collecting duct. Something you can see is the fact that on this collecting duct there are going to be a total of 10 yellow arrows. Now these 10 yellow arrows indicate the 10 different nephrons that are draining its fluid into this one collecting duct. Now this is typical throughout the kidney where you will have one collecting duct draining 10 different nephrons. So in the images you see and including this video, it is way more complex and covered with nephrons than you will actually see drawn and explained in your text and videos here. Now the first structure to focus on will be where filtration happens where filtration of the blood occurs. And this is going to be the renal corpuscle. And the process is going to be called ultra filtration. And it's called ultra filtration because all but the largest molecules get taken out of the blood and enter the Bowman's capsule. Now the renal corpuscle I'm outlining here in orange. The glomerulus is going to be the red capillary bed Bowman's capsule is the white space surrounding it. Now you have an afferent arterial that brings in oxygenated blood with everything in it. And you have an efferent arterial that transports blood away. Now this is oxygenated blood, but it's been filtered. Now what's entering Bowman's capsule? So I'm going to focus on the main things that get filtered out. And that is going to include water sodium, potassium, chloride. It is going to include calcium. It is going to include carbonate, glucose, and a very small quantity of amino acids. Now again, these are the main things that get filtered out. There are occasionally other things as well. Urea is another major, major waste product that gets filtered out. Now, all of this, at this point, is called ultrafiltrate, and it is isotonic to the blood, meaning it's the equal concentration or equal um, solute concentration compared to the blood because you take out equal parts of solutes to water. Now, what happens next is this ultrafiltrate, which is what it's called now, is going to flow into the proximal tubule. And the proximal tubule I am filling in currently with purple. Now this is the first place where reabsorption of what was just filtered occurs. And it gets reabsorbed back into the peritubular capillary that is shown here in red and blue that wraps around the proximal tubule. So anything that gets reabsorbed from the proximal tubule goes not into the surrounding tissue per se, but into the bloodstream and carried away out the blue venous system here. Now what gets reabsorbed in the proximal tubule? Well, large quantities of water. Roughly 65% of the water gets reabsorbed. 100% of the glucose, 100% of the amino acids get reabsorbed. 65% of sodium, 65% of potassium, 65% of calcium, 50% chloride, and roughly 85% of carbonate. Okay, so I'm putting numbers up here because this is going to show the percentages that get reabsorbed. That way you can follow it. Okay, so you've got the majority 
of molecules that got filtered out, they get reabsorbed here. And they, again, they're entering this bloodstream to be carried away because you do not want to lose these valuable components. So here, the fluid that enters the proximal tubule is isotonic. And by the time it gets down here to the descending loop of Henle, it is also isotonic. And the reason why it is isotonic is because for every molecule of solute, you reabsorb some water. So you remove equal parts water, equal parts solute. So the volume decreases, but the concentration stays the same. Now, what you end up with then is isotonic filtrate in a smaller volume that now enters the descending limb of the loop of Henle. And this is where it's extremely important because this is going to be where this medullary gradient or corticomedullary gradient is formed. And as fluid flows downwards, as indicated by the yellow arrows pointing down, it is going to come in contact with more and more concentrated surrounding tissue. And what this means is that water can then leave and enter the vasorecta, the capillary that surrounds the loop of Henle. So here you are regaining 15% more water. You're not reabsorbing any more glucose. You've already taken 100% out. You've already taken 100% amino acids. This is going to be where the main focus is reabsorbing some more water as that filtrate flows deeper down into that gradient. And the vasorecta is important because it's flowing counter current. So any water that flows into the vasorecta gets carried out and away it goes into the venous system. Now, what is making this really increasingly concentrated tissue as you go down into the cortex in the medulla? This is going to be driven primarily through the ascending loop of Henle. Now this is where you are using ATP and sodium potassium pumps to actively transport ions such as sodium out of the filtrate and into the bloodstream. Now other ions are also moving out, potassium is moving out, you have calcium moving out, you have chloride moving out as well. And again, just like water, it is active. It is being pushed out. In this case, it's different than water because it's using ATP. And it is being pushed and moved into the vasa recta. So that way it can be transported away from the nephron. So ultimately, it is going to flow into the venous system and away all those molecules go. So again, just to write this down here, you're reabsorbing about 25% more sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, and the remaining 15% or so of carbonate. So what you end up with here and we'll start with descending here. Descending, you had isotonic solution. By the time it reaches the lowest part of the loop of Henle, it is now extremely hypertonic, extremely concentrated, such that by the time it reaches down here, there's about 1,200 milliosmoles. So much more concentrated than the 300 that was up at the start of it. 
the ascending loop is going to start at 1200. So again, hypertonic. And by the time it gets up here to the distal tubule, it is hypotonic. And the reason why it's hypotonic is because you've been pumping out all these ions out of the filtrate. So by the time you get to the distal tubule, you end up with a much smaller volume of filtrate. And this filtrate is also hypotonic. And if you were to urinate this out as is, it would be dilute urine. Now what happens in the distal tubule? In the distal tubule, I'm coloring in as green here. This is where the some of the final tuning of what will become your urine occurs. So depending on your overall water balance and solute balance, you may or may not reabsorb solutes that are remaining in the, the actual filtrate, such as sodium and also calcium. You also may or may not reabsorb water. It depends on how hydrated you are. Now, if you're dehydrated, you're going to reabsorb in the collecting duct and the distal tubule, you're going to reabsorb a maximum value of 9.8% more. Now that's if you're extremely dehydrated, extremely dehydrated. Actually, should be 19.8, sorry. Now, of course, it's not a spectrum. If you're really quite hydrated, you're overhydrated, okay, you're not going to absorb any water. It would be zero. Okay, so it's all going to depend on how hydrated you are. And the same thing goes for calcium and sodium, for that matter, also. So it's going to vary, right? You may not absorb much calcium, okay, or you may absorb you know, the final um, 10%, right? So you may absorb 10% or you may absorb 0%. For sodium, right, you may absorb the remaining 10% or you may absorb 0%. It's going to vary based on your body's needs. That's the takeaway here for the distal tubule. Now, the collecting duct is also typically involved with what's going on with the distal tubule since they both will reabsorb whatever is needed by the body. Now, in the collecting duct, this is where it is finally becoming urine. And this is going to be where, at this point, you will excrete out either hypotonic urine, just like that, the interdistal tubule, if you are extremely hydrated. If you are properly hydrated, it's going to be a range between hypotonic and hypertonic. If you are extremely dehydrated, you will excrete hypertonic urine, meaning you retain as much water as you possibly can and you're getting out really solute, heavy solute driven urine. And this is where your urine will look like a dark yellow. Hypotonic urine will look more of a clear, kind of watery looking kind of color. Now how the collecting duct will reabsorb more water is through the use of aquaporins that can be plugged into the membrane such that as the filtrate flows down the collecting duct, water is going to be rushing out as that filtrate encounters more and more concentrated tissue in the surroundings and ultimately leading to the most concentrated urine that you could possibly get, which is going to be a concentration of 1,200 milliosmoles. Now from here, the final urine is going to enter the renal papillae and lead to the renal pelvis, then the ureter, 
then the urinary bladder, followed by excretion of that urine. Now, what I just went through here is basically a walkthrough of what occurs at each structure within the nephron, what is getting filtered out, what is getting reabsorbed, and how you get to the final concentration of your urine as it goes from isotonic to hypertonic to hypotonic and then back to hypertonic or it'll stay hypotonic. It all depends on your body's needs. Now, I did not dive into the extreme details of how each of these structures transports out some of these molecules and water. For that, please come to office hours and we can certainly discuss it there. And of course, if you have any other questions, office hours is the time to come in and see me to discuss this.